Thank you, Senator Tuberville. Senator Rosen, please. Uh, well, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank you both for being here today, and uh, good to see you here and the really uh, thoughtful answers. I want to build a little bit on what Senator uh, Scott was talking about encountering the uh, rising Chinese influence. So, Director Haynes, of course, we know in recent months, China has rapidly increased its engagement around the world. This includes brokering, actually trying to broker troubling agreements between, uh, to reestablish diplomatic ties between Iran and Saudi Arabia, offering to broker peace deals uh, between Ukraine and the Russian aggressors. So these incidents, they highlight China's persistent presence and intention to exert its influence and match the U.S. as a global power. So how can the U.S. address China's increasing involvement in global diplomatic matters? And can we expect to see more countries try to turn to China as a mediator? And what do you think the implications of this pivot would mean to us? Thank you, Senator. I, uh, it's a very thoughtful question. I think, it, um, obviously, China's engaging in international fora in and of itself is not a challenge or a problem. It's how they engage and the way in which they use that engagement to mm -hmm. actually undermine, for example, global norms and the international order and the way that we have designed it. We have uh, spent quite a bit of time in the intelligence community trying to map out how they are approaching their engagement in international fora in order to do just that. And I would say that uh, this is a place where um, we've been looking at their efforts to essentially um, uh, sort of garner influence and uh, change the direction of international organizations so as to uh, support their particular um, approach to global norms, which is more uh, aligned with an authoritarian system, and you look at organizations such as the ITU or the International Telecommunications Union and other places where I think there have been concerns about uh, China's influence and efforts in those spaces, and that's something I know the policy community is focused on uh, trying to manage. I think another aspect of it is, as you rightly point out, their effort to try to create coalitions. Um, I would have to say that in that area, we've seen them have mixed success. You know, there's sort of things like the 17 plus one forum and other things like that that they've tried to do where because they uh, took a quite a bullying approach to trying to get other countries to mm -hmm. do what they wanted to do, it actually backfired to some extent on them and they weren't able to engage in as much influence as we thought. And there are yet other variations on the theme that I think are important to our work moving forward. Maybe General Barrier has more. Yeah. I believe China is trying to uh, enhance its uh, reputation on the on the global stage. Uh, when I look at the examples that you gave, we're, we're a key security partner with the kingdom, and we're a, a key security partner with uh, Ukraine. We we also have influence, and and uh, we're in discussions with those partners every single day on really tough issues. And I and I think um, uh, whether those are military diplomats and the Defense Attaché Service, or the work that our State Department is doing, um, we've we've got a great message. Well, I want to build on this because China's gaining a hold in the Middle East. They want to gain a hold there. And our partners in the region, um, uh, they want to hedge. They may want to hedge what they could perceive as America's diminishing uh, global engagement. So building on what you're talking about, how does the U.S., how do we reassure our allies and partners uh, in the Middle East, but more broadly, that uh, we will remain a force for stability and security and steadfast with them in the region. So even, even though our military commitments have come down um, in the central region, uh, U.S. Central Command is still very active in, in this area. We have a forward headquarters um, in Qatar. We have uh, deployed forces there still, and, not, and it's not a large number, but they're, they're actively there. And uh, we have long-standing relationships with these partners, and so it's our ability to continue to communicate with them uh, to demonstrate uh, American resolve in the region and to bring what it is that the U.S. brings. Director, anything? No? Yeah, I, uh, we had a recent trip there, and I think that was the, um, the biggest concern from at least the Abraham Accord countries that we visited, that we would remain steadfast in the region. And speaking of the region, uh, I only have 33 seconds left, so I will just pope, ask this uh, for the record, but I, I really want to talk about Iran and Russia, their defense cooperation, uh, how concerned we are about the sale of Russian aircraft and air defense systems to Iran. Uh, I'll take that off the record as I only, unless you can answer in about 30 seconds, I'll just, uh, uh, we know what Iran is seeking from Russia. 
Certainly, I, I think this is a, a relationship of convenience at the moment, and I think uh, the Iranians are, are gaining some benefit for providing munitions, UAVs and such, to, uh, to, the, to the Russians. We're watching it very, very carefully, um, and we'll see where this relationship goes. Thank you. Thank you Thanks,